And let's continue with the fourth chapter of Mary Poppins Comes Back, Topsy Turvy. Jane and Michael and John and Barbara and Mary Poppins have all gone to meet Mary's cousin, Mr. Turvy, to fix the bowl that Jane broke in the last chapter. Unfortunately, they came on the second Monday, which means that everything Mr. Turvey wants to go right is wrong. He is now upside down, and Michael, in handing him the bowl, got too close, and he is upside down as well. And that is where we will pick up. Strike me pink, said Mr. Turvey in a surprised voice, looking at Michael out of the corner of his eye. I never knew it was catching. You two will have all the high high, I say, steady there. You'll knock the goods off the shelves if you're not careful that I shall be charged with breakages. What are you doing? He was now addressing Jane, whose feet had suddenly swept off the carpet and were turning above her head in the giddiest manner. Over and over she went, her, first her head and then her feet in the air, until at last she came down on the other side of Mr. Turvey and found herself standing on her head. You know, said Mr. Turvey, staring at her solemnly, this is all very odd. I never knew it to happen to anyone else before. Upon my word, I never did. I do hope you don't mind. Jane laughed, turning her head toward him and waving her legs in the air. Not a bit, thank you. I've always wanted to stand on my head, and I've never been able to do it before. It's very comfortable. Hmm, said Mr. Turvey dolefully. I'm glad somebody likes it. I can't say I feel like that. I do, said Michael. I wish I could stand like this all I wish I could stay like this all my life. Everything looks so nice and different. And indeed everything was different. From their strange position on the floor, Jane and Michael could see that the articles on the carpenter's bench were all upside down. China dogs, broken dolls, wooden stools all standing on their heads. Look, whispered Jane to Michael. He turned his head as much as he could, and there, creeping out of a hole in the wain of a hole in the wainscoting came a came a small mouse. It skipped head over heels into the middle of the room, and turning upside down, balanced daintily on its nose in front of them. They watched for a moment, very surprised, and Michael suddenly said, Jane, look out the window. She turned her head carefully, for it was rather difficult, and saw, to her astonishment, that everything outside the room, as well as everything in it, was different. Out in the street, the houses were standing on their heads, their chimneys on the pavement, and their doorsteps in the air, and out of the doorways came little curls of smoke. In the distance, a church had turned turtle and was balancing rather top-heavy on the point of its steeple, and the rain, which had always seemed to them to come from the sky, was pouring up from the earth in a steady shower. Oh, said Jane, how beautifully strange it is. It's like being in another world. I'm so glad we came today. Well, said Mr. Turvey mournfully, you're very kind, I must say. You do know how to make allowances. Now what about this bowl? He stretched his hand to take it, but at that moment the bull gave a little skip and turned upside down, and it, did so, and it did it so quickly and so funnily that Jane and Michael could not help laughing. This, said Mr. Turvey miserably, is no laughing matter for me. I assure you I shall have to put the rivets in wrong way up, and if they show, they show, I can't help it. And taking his tools out of his pocket, he mended the bull, weeping heavily as he worked. Humph, said Mary Poppins, stooping to pick it up. Well, that's done, and now we'll be going. At that, Mr. Turvey began to sob pitifully. That's right, leave me, he said bitterly. Don't stay and help me keep my mind off my misery. Don't hold out a friendly hand. I'm not worth it. I'd hope you might all favor me by accepting some refreshment. There's a plum cake and a tin up there on the top shelf, but there, I had no right to expect it. You've your own lives to live, and I shouldn't ask you to stay and brighten mine. This isn't my lucky day, he fumbled for his pocket handkerchief. Well, began Mary Poppins, pausing in the, in the middle of buttoning her gloves. Oh, do stay, Mary Poppins. Do, cried Jane and Michael together, dancing eagerly on their heads. You could reach the cake if you stood on a chair, said Jane helpfully. Mr. Turvey laughed all this time. It was rather a melancholy sound, but still it was a laugh. <laughs> She'll need no chair, he said, gloomily chuckling in his throat. <laughs> She'll get what she wants, and in the way she wants it, she will. And at that moment, before the children's astonished eyes, Mary Poppins did a curious thing. She raised herself stiffly on her toes and balanced there for a moment. Then, very slowly, and in a most dignified manner, she turned seven Catherine wheels through the air, over and over, her skirts clinging neatly about her ankles, her hat set tidily on her head, 
She wheeled up to the top of the shelf, took the cake, and wheeled down again, landing neatly on her head in front of Mr. Turvey and the children. "'Hooray! Hooray! Hooray!' shouted Michael delightedly. But from the floor, Mary Poppins gave him such a look that he rather wished he had remained quiet and said nothing. "'Thank you, Mary,' said Mr. Turvey, sadly, not seeming at all surprised. "'There,' snapped Mary Poppins, "'that's the last thing I shall do for you today!' She put the cake tin down in front of Mr. Turvey. Immediately, with a little wobbly roll, he turned upside down, and each time Mr. Turvey turned it right side up, it turned over again. "'Ah!' he said despairingly. "'I might have known it. Nothing is right today, not even the cake tin. We shall have to cut it open from the bottom. I'll just ask.' And he stumbled on his head to the door and shouted through the crack between the, between it and the floor, "'Miss Tarlet! Miss Tarlet! I'm so sorry to trouble you, but could you, would you, do you mind bringing the can opener?' Far away downstairs, Miss Tarlet's voice could be heard, grimly protesting, "'Tosh!' said a loud, croaky voice inside the room. "'Tosh! Nonsense! Don't bother the woman! Let Polly do it! Pretty Polly! Clever Polly!' Turning on their heads, Jane and Michael were surprised to see that the voice came from Mary Poppins' parrot-headed umbrella, which was at that moment Catherine wheeling toward the cake. It landed head downwards on the tin, and in two seconds had cut a large hole in it with its beak. "'There!' squawked the parrot-head concertedly. "'Polly did it! Handsome Polly!' and a half-self-satisfied smile spread over its beak as it settled head downwards on the floor beside Mary Poppins. "'Well, that's very kind, very kind,' said Mr. Turvey in his gloomy voice. As the dark crust of the cake became visible, he took a knife out of his pocket and cut a slice. He started violently and peered at the cake more closely. Then he looked reproachfully at Mary Poppins. "'This is your doing, Mary. Don't deny it!' That cake, when the tin was last opened, was a plum cake, and now... Sponge is much more digestible, said Mary Poppins primly. Eat slowly, please. You're not starving, savages, she snapped, passing a small slice to each Jane and Michael. That's all very well, grumbled Mr. Turvey, bitterly eating his slice in two bites. But I do like a plum or two, I must admit, and, well, this is not my lucky day, he broke off as somebody rapped loudly on the door. "'Come in!' called Mr. Turvey, Miss Tartlett looking, if anything, rounder than ever, and panting from her climb up the stairs, burst into the room. "'The tin opener, Mr. Turvey!' she began grimly, then paused and stared. "'My!' she said, opening her mouth very wide and letting the tin opener slip from her hand. "'For all the sights I ever did see, this is what I wouldn't have expected.' She took a step forward, gazing at the four pairs of waving feet with an expression of deep disgust. "'Upside down, a lot of you, like flies on a the ceiling. "'Then you're supposed to be respectable human creatures. "'This is no place for a lady of my standing. "'I shall leave the house this instant. "'Mr. Turvey, please note that.' "'She flounced angrily toward the door. "'But even as she went, her great billowing skirts "'blew against her round legs and lifted her from the floor. "'A look of anguished astonishment spread over her face. "'She flung out her hands wildly. "'Mr. Turvey! Mr. Turvey, sir! Catch me! Hold me down!' "'Help! Help!' cried Miss Tarlet, as she, too, began a sweeping Catherine wheel. "'Oh! Oh! The world's turning turtle! What shall I do? Help! Help!' she shrieked as she went over again. But as she turned, a curious change came over her. Her round face lost its peevish expre expression and began to shine with smiles. Then Jane and Michael, with a start of surprise, saw her straight hair crinkle into a mass of little curls and ringlets as she whirled and twirled through the room. When she spoke again, her gruff voice was as sweet as honeysuckle. What, "'What can be happening to me?' cried Miss Tartlett's new voice. "'I feel like a ball, a bouncing ball, or perhaps a balloon, or a cherry tart!' She broke into a peal of happy laughter. "'Dear me, how cheerful I am!' she trilled, turning in circles, turning and circling through the air. "'I never enjoyed my life before, but now I feel I shall never stop. It's the loveliest sensation. I shall write home to my sister about it. To my cousins and uncles and aunts, I shall tell them that the only proper way to live is upside down, upside down, upside down. And chanting happily, Miss Tarlet went whirling round and round. Jane and Michael watched her with delight, and Mr. Turvey watched her with surprise, for he had never known Miss Tarlet to be anything but peevish and unfriendly. Very odd, very odd, said Mr. Turvey to himself, shaking his head as he stood on it. 
Another knock sounded at the door. Is anyone here name of T anyone here name of Turvey? inquired a voice, and the postman appeared in the doorway, holding a letter. He stood staring at the sight that met his eyes. Holy smoke! he remarked, pushing his cap to the back of his head. I must have come to the wrong place. I'm looking for a decent, quiet gentleman called Turvey. I've got a letter for him. Besides, I promised my wife I'd be home early, and I've broken my word, and I thought, Ha! said Mr. Turvey from the floor. A broken promise is one of the things I can't mend. Not my line, sorry. The postman stared down at him. Am I dreaming or am I not? he muttered. It seems to me I've got a whirling, twirling, skirling company of lunatics. Give me the letter, dear postman. Give the letter to Topsy Tarlet. And turn upside down with me, Mr. Turvey, you see, is engaged. Miss Tarlet, wheeling toward the postman, took his hand in hers, and as she touched him, his feet slithered off the floor into the air. Then away they went, the postman and Miss Tarlet, hand in hand, and over and over like a pair of bouncing footballs. How lovely it is, cried Miss Tarlet happily. Oh, postman, dear, we're seeing life for the first time and such a pleasant view of it. Over we go. Isn't it wonderful? Yes, shouted Jane and Michael as they joined the wheeling dance of the postman and Miss Tarlet. And presently Mr. Turvey, too, joined in, awkwardly turning and tossing through the air. Mary Poppins and her umbrella followed, going over and over, evenly and neatly, with the utmost dignity. There they all were, spinning and wheeling, with the world going up and down, outside, and, happy, and the happy cries of Miss Tarlet echoing through the room. The whole of the town is upside down, she sang, bouncing and bounding. And up on the shelves, the cracked and broken hearts twirled and spun like tops. The shepherdesses the shepherdesses and her lion waltzed gracefully together. The gray flannel elephant stood on his trunk in the boat and kicked his feet in the air, and the toy soldier danced a hornpipe, not on his feet, but on his head, which bobbed about the willow pattern plate very gracefully. How happy I am, cried Jane, as she, car as she careened across the room. How happy I am, cried Michael, turning somersaults in the air. Mr. Turvey mopped his eyes with his handkerchief as he bounced off the window pane. Mary Poppins and her umbrella said nothing, but just sailed calmly round, head downwards. How happy we all are, cried Miss Tartlett. But the postman had now found his tongue and did not agree with her. Ear, yeah, he shouted, turning again. Elp, elp, where am I? Who am I? What am I? I don't know at all. I'm lost. Oh, elp. And there we will pause.